Hello there. Welcome to the learning of engineering tutorial video lectures. In this video lecture, we are discussing about the mechanics of solids and that's going to be thin cylinders and spherical shells. In the previous video lectures, we have discussed about what are the different types of stresses are existed in the cylindrical vessel as well as the spherical vessels. So now, we are going to be talking about the change in dimensions of a thin spherical shell due to an internal pressure. As we know, why the internal pressures are going to be? As we know, these kind of thin cylindricals or thin shells we are using to store the fluid under certain pressure. So then what will happen in this case? So then the pressure is going to be acting inside. So then the material is going to be absorbing that and certain resistance force is going to be developing. Then our main aim is to find out the, how the dimensions are going to be changing. As we know, the spherical, the spherical shells have some similarity as for the geometrical point of view. In x-axis and y-axis, they have the symmetry. On that basis, last video lectures we have identified or we derived the, the stresses acting in the material. That is in the circumferential direction and that is equal to the longitudinal stresses also. So there we can see sigma 1 is representing the, the circumference of circumferential stress which is acting in the circumferential direction that is equal to Pd by 40. That the same because of the symmetry and longitudinal stress also going to be equal. So then these are going to be equal and like forces. Equal and the like forces are going to be acting inside the, the thin spherical shells. So now how we are going to be determining? Suppose you can take the, the thin cylindrical vessels, then what happened? The sigma 1 we got Pd by 2t. So it means that, that means the thin cylindrical shells are going to be subjected to sigma 1, sigma 2 as well as the tau. So these three forces are going to be generated. But when it comes to the, the thin spherical shells, the tau is always going to be 0. The reason, because this material is not at all subjected to any kind of these stresses. So that equation I am going to be writing sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2 if I am taking sigma 1 and the sigma 2 can you see we do have the same magnitude and due to this reason and it will going to be 0. It means the thin spherical shells are not subjecting any kind of the shear stresses only it is going to be subjected to the equal and like forces that is going to be circumferential is equal to your the longitudinal stress. Now we need to find out the change in dimensions of the component. So, we know some parameters, Young's modulus is equal to the stress by strain we are going to be taking. And similarly, the strain is equal to del D by D or del L by L we are going to be considering in this case. In this case, mostly the change in dimensions in the diameter by original diameter we are going to be considering. So, now if I am going to be using this one and I am assuming that the stresses are going to be acting in the x direction. Suppose, in that case, I want to find out the strain. So, that I am going to say the strain in the circumferential or longitudinal directions we are going to be getting sigma epsilon 1 is equal to the sigma 1 by E minus mu into sigma 2 by E. We know these equations very well. Now, we know sigma 1 is equal to the sigma 2. This equation I started to modifying sigma 1 by E minus mu into sigma 1 by E here. So, sigma 1 by E, 1 minus mu we are getting. So, can you see the finally the strain in that material in terms of the stresses as well as the angst modulus, sigma 1 by E, 1 minus mu we got it. We know the sigma 1 is nothing but Pd by 40. If I am going to be substituting in this equation, so then automatically I can define the strain in terms of the pressure and dimensions of the component. So, now we will see the straining effect is equal to how much? That is going to be epsilon is equal to del D by D, change in dimensions. So now we can see that is going to be epsilon 1 is equal to del D by D or D D by D, D, differentiation of this one. That is going to be small changes in that diameter that is equal to sigma 1 is equal to P D by 40. P D by 40 E, I got it, 1 minus Poisson's ratio. So, this is the way we are going to be calculating the, the strain specifically in the directional, in the diameter direction. In x is equal to y also going to be the same. Now, we will see what is the volumetric, volumetric strain existed inside this material. So, here we can see the volumetric strain of the object. 
we know the volumetric strain is nothing but change in volume to the original volume we are calling calling the volumetric strain. So, the indicated letter is going to be your epsilon v that is equal to change in volume by original volume. As you know the finding of the original volume is going to be here the v is equal to pi by 4 pi r cube this is in terms of the radius. Now, I have, I have taken by substituting r is equal to 2d and then finally, I got it pi by 6 into d cube this is in terms of the diameter the, at present we are defining the volumetric strain in terms of the diameter. So, then what I am going to do I am going to be dif differentiating. So, differentiating we are doing this original volume as you know original volume here differentiating dv with respect to the dd we are going to be taking with respect to the diameter then pi by 6 and then the d cube will become 3 into d square and the d is going to be the derivation of this going to be d in bracket d. So, then what I am going to do I am going to be substituting this change in volume and to the original volume then I have substituted in this equation. So, this is going to be here once I am going to be getting this and I had the simplified here and the change in volume is equal to 3 into the derivation of the d by d we got it. As we know the d by d this is the parameter we are going to be taking the change in dim dimensions to the original dimensions when it is going to be subject to the circumferential directions. So, then p d by 4 t e into 1 minus mu is going to be your Poisson's ratio this value I am going to be substituted here. So, now I have presented that equation over here. So, what I am going to do I am going to be simplifying here the constant terminologies I am going to be taking here that is the change in volume that is the volumetric strain is equal to 3 by 4 p d by t t t e a bracket 1 minus mu that is going to be your Poisson's ratio. So, this is the way we are going to be developing the mathematical model for the spherical shell when it is subjected to the dimensional change. The dimensional changes are occurred that is because of the internal pressures right. So, and one, one thing is that in spherical vessels there is no shear forces only it has existed only that the sigma 1 and the sigma 2 they are going to be equal and like forces only. So, I hope you are able to understand the mathematical model how we are building for the analysis of the strain existed inside the material. So, still if you feel any confusion or difficulty please put in the comment section so that I can reach you out. Thank you.